Howdy, howdy, folks. How's it going? I'm Attic Goblin, and today we are playing The Last Time. Things are not going well. I think we're going to get framed for murder. I think we're going to get framed for murder. Paypal. I can't make out the outlines of two people. They're not going to go away, I suppose. Oh, come in, officers. Uh, no. How can I help you, officers? We have an arrest warrant for Mr. Glover. That would be me. I'm Jack Glover. Mr. Glover, we have a warrant for your arrest. What the hell's going on? Mr. Glover, you are under arrest. What? You're being charged for arson in relation to the attack on your care home on Wednesday. What? Jack? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention when questioned anything you later rely on in court. It wasn't me, but there's no point protesting. The evidence will win through, hopefully. I'll cooperate, officers. Jack, what's, what's going on? I'm innocent, Sarah. You've got to believe me. Sir, please come with us. Two months later in months. Please take your seats. The trial will continue shortly. I just wanted to thank you for choosing me as your lawyer, Jack. I've never defended someone in an arson trial before. I didn't choose you. You were assigned to me by the state. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot. Well, I hope you're ha as happy to have me as your lawyer as I am to defend you. This has been a great learning experience for me. Excellent. <laughs> I need a better lawyer. You're doing a great job. I'm glad you're my lawyer. Thanks, Jack. That means a lot. Really helps my confidence. You'll need all the confidence you can get after your terrible performance today, Herb. Give me a break, Larry. I'm doing my best. Well, your best never was good enough, was it, Herb? I've been better than you ever since we were at law school together. Shut up, Larry. Leave him alone. Hmm. Thanks, Jack. Silence in the court. The prosecution will now make its closing argument. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, over the course of this trial I have demonstrated that the defendant is a cold-hearted arsonist. I can't... I can't... Objection! I don't think you're allowed to raise an objection. Order in the court. Thank you, Your Honour. As I was saying, I have demonstrated that the, that the defendant is a cold-hearted arsonist. No pun intended, folks. It's my contention that the defendant, ungrateful for the care he received, set fire to the only place he could call home. The firefighters who attended the scene discovered that the fire originated in Mr. Glover's bedroom. Police have ruled out the staff and, the, and other residents as suspects, meaning that Mr. Glover is the only person who could have started the fire. Well, I can't object, can I? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that concludes my argument. Since I sincerely hope that you will do the right thing and find Mr. Glover guilty. Thank you, Larry, for the very dramatic conclusion. The court now calls upon the defence to make its closing arguments. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, I stand before you claiming that the defendant is innocent. Objection! <laughs> I hope you will find that Mr. Glover is a nice old man, incapable of setting fire to his home. <laughs> Thumbs up. But don't take my word for it. I've found a few character witnesses who will testify that Jack is a decent human being. For my first witness, allow me to introduce... It's not a game show. Josephine Pinkerton. Miss Pinkerton, would you say that you know the defendant well? Oh yes, I know Mr. Glover very well indeed. I've been his... Primary carer for years. We're very close. Objection! 
And how would you describe him? Oh, he's a harmless old thing. He can get grumpy sometimes when he needs a nap, but I've never seen him do anything violent. Interesting, very interesting, Mrs. Pinkerton. Thank you so much for your testimony. It is clear that such a gentle old man could never be capable of a crime of which he is of which he is accused. And now for my next witness. Allow me to present Grace McLeod. Miss McLeod. It's, it's Miss McLeod, dearie. Indeed, Miss McLeod. How would you describe your relationship with the defendant? Oh, that's that's up to him. Jack can have whatever relationships he wants with me. I mean to say, what do you think of Mr. Glover? Oh, he's just scrumptious. He can be a naughty boy sometimes, but I don't think he'd set the care hog on fire. He wouldn't want to hurt me. Intriguing. Surely this testimony clears Jack of all wrongdoing. As if that wasn't enough, there's someone very special I'd like to introduce to the jury. Willard Camperthorn. Mr. Willard, the defendant saved your life, is that correct? Yes, soldier, that is correct. Extraordinary. You must be very grateful to him, am I correct? No. This man clearly isn't fit to stand trial. Do you have any proper witnesses to present? Forgive me, Your Honour, I just have one more witness. Sarah Price. Miss Price, how do you know the defendant? I only met, I, I only met him recently. And what impressions do you have of him? Look, he's complicated, but he's a good guy, okay? I saw him risk his own life to save someone. He's a brave man. He even took me clubbing with him. He's cool. He can't be responsible for the fire. He's a good person. Excellent. Thank you very much, Miss Price. I rest my case. I was also with her when the fire went up. Did we not think to bring that up? I think that went wherever a whale, don't you? Yeah, I do. You did a good job. You really think so? That means a lot. Silence! The jury has returned with their verdict. They were unable to reach a unanimous decision. I have decided to object to accept a majority verdict. Seven of out of twelve jurors found the defendant guilty of arson. Oh no. Woo! In your face. I'm sorry, Jack. Silence! I sentence Mr. Glover to twenty years in prison. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> really? Well, this has gone wonderfully. Prison, day one. Get a move on in, mate. Sails down the corridor. The corridor. Hello. How are you? Hi, lads. You're a big fella. It's your lucky day, inmate. Your cellmate was hospitalised yesterday, so you've got the place to yourself. How did you get hospitalised? Stop asking questions and get in there before I break your skull. Well, this is fantastic. May as well go to sleep. I guess I'd better try to get some sleep. Who knows what I'm in for tomorrow? Prison. Day two. I'm starving. Time for breakfast. I'd like some breakfast, please. You got it. Here you go. Enjoy. Oh, thank you. He's nice. I like it. You're new. You're new. Yeah, my name's Jack. It's nice. It's nice to see another old timer here. In here, we're old fossils. Should stick together. I'm Sean. Nice to meet you. How long have you been in prison? Almost forty-five years now. Almost forty-five years now, which seems harsh just for taking some stuff that didn't belong to me. What kind of stuff? Art stuff mostly. Paintings, antiques, small statues. 
I was quite an infam infamous cat burglar when I was young. But one day, it all went wrong. Museum security guard collapsed while chasing me. The damn fool had a heart attack. I stopped to resurrect him. Resuscitate him, even. I'm not Jesus. People caught me at the scene. He died anyway. And I got slapped with a life sentence for murder. Forty-five years later, I'm still here. Tom! What about you? What's your story? I'm innocent. I shouldn't be in here. Sure, you're innocent, just like everyone else in this place. I mean it. Somebody set my care home on fire and somehow I ended up getting the blame. Really? Well, that's some kind of bad, bad luck right there. Sounds like you don't really belong here. But look on the bright side. They might find some new evidence that clears your name. In fact, I'll bet you'll be out of here. Within a few days, you mark my words. Prison. Day 96. Sarah, it's me. Jack, it's been weeks since your last call. Are you alright? No, I'm not alright. I'm in prison. Well, you're as surely as ever. So, I take it out to mean that you haven't completely cursed your spirit in there? Look, I've been reviewing the evidence, talking to witnesses. I'm hoping to get enough evidence for an appeal soon. Thanks, Sarah. It means a lot knowing that you've got a friend on the outside. Keeps me going. Ah, don't get soppy on me now, Jack. I know you'd do the same for me. Sarah... Sorry, hold on there. There's someone at the door. Give me a second. Yes, can I help you? Wait, what are you? Ah! Sarah! Hello? Is this Jack Glover? Yes, this is Jack. Who are you? Ah, Jack. What a happy coincidence. The very man I'm looking for. I asked you who you are. My, my. Don't you recognize my voice? I'm insulted. What do you want? It's quite simple, Jack. I want you dead. You were supposed to die when I set the care home on fire, and yet, like a rat, you escaped. So instead of chasing you, I decided to make you come to me. Why the hell would I do that? Because if you don't, Jack, I will put a bullet in this little girl's head. Pretty little head. Girl's pretty head. Whatever. Because if you don't, Jack, I will put a bullet in this girl's pretty little head. I think he's the bartender. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he is. I'll do. Okay, I'll do whatever you want. Good. Because I need you to come and meet me within 24 hours. You can't be serious. I'm locked up. I'll be at the last place you saw Darren alive. I think you remember where that is. Find a way. Click. The last place I saw Darren alive. Sarah's being held hostage at the house where... Oh God. Right, how am I gonna get out of prison? Hey, you all right? No, Sean, I'm not all right. What's wrong, Jack? You can tell why I've given... Well, can you guess why I've given him that accent? I need to get out of here. Somebody needs my help. Hey, why didn't you say so earlier? I can help you get out, no problem. Really? Sure, I used to break into places all the time. Breaking out isn't so different. All you need to escape is a pair of wire cutters. I can get those for you, but only if you've got something to trade them for. If you can bring me six cigarettes, I can get you the wire cutters so you can escape. If you know so much about escaping, then why haven't you broken out of here already? Hey man, I can't go break back out into society. I'm sick, I need help. Fine, I'll bring you the cigarettes. How do I get hold of them? Well, cigarettes are available here, so people usually keep them close. 
If you talk to the right people, you should be able to get them. I'll be in the canteen. Come find me when you've got six cigarettes. Okay. Let's go upstairs. Library. I'm thinking there's probably going to be one cigarette in each room. There's a book. The Garden by Lilith Rose. By somebody. There's a book. I can't read them though. I haven't got my glasses. More books. Six Swedish and six easy lessons. History of Scottish Football, 1967. Stanley! Hey there! Oh no, please, not another one. What are you talking about? You're here to bully me, aren't you? Please, just leave me alone. I never did any harm to anybody. <laughs> yes, I'm the worst bully there is. Give me cigarettes or else. Or else what? Um, just kidding. I'm not really here to bully you. Oh, thank God for that. You really had me there for a second. Someone's been bullying me all week. I thought you were here to join him. Who's been bullying you? This guy called Willie. Spends a lot of time in the gym. He's really strong. I'm afraid he'll hurt me. Hey, you look pretty tough. Do you think you could please go talk to Willie for me? Get him off my back. Sure, I'll go talk to him for you. Oh, thank you. You're my hero. Um, we'll do... Maybe one or two cigarettes. Call it a day, because I think it's going to be a lot of running about. To be honest with you. Hey there! What can I do, what can I do for you? You got any cigarettes you can spare? Man, I don't smoke no cigarettes. It's bad for your health. Shouldn't you be exercising your left arm as well? Nah, man. That's what they want you to do. You exercise both arms, then your whole upper body gets tired. And then, how do you defend yourself if you get jumped in your cell? I do my whole right side one day, then my left side the next. That way, half my body is always fresh and ready to fight. Makes sense, I guess. You're dead right, it makes sense. Willie knows what he's talking about. Stanley tells me you've been picking on him. Is this true? Oh, that guy spends all his time in the library. I didn't mean to make that sucker feel bad or nothing. I just wanted to spend some time with him. I love that kid, man. I may not be a good at expressing it, but it's true. He's so educated and stuff. Say, do me a favor and bring him this letter I wrote for him. It might help him understand my feelings. All right, I've got it. I'll bring him the letter. I'll be going now. Bye. Hey, Stanley. Hi there. Oh, hi. Did you sort things out with Lily yet? I sure did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What happened? Did he fight you? Not exactly. He gave me a letter to pass on to you. Yeah, have a look. A letter? Let me see. Oh my goodness, he likes me. Congratulations! I never knew he felt this way. This changes everything. I've always liked him too. I know, I'll write him a poem. Wait, no, a sonnet. Just like Shakespeare. That way he'll know I like him back. Thanks so much for doing this. Have a cigarette. It's not much, but it's the least I can do. Thanks! Okay, I've got my first cigarette. It's a start. I don't really want to go to the showers in the prison, that's, yeah, but there you are, that's where we're going. Oh no, my, my clothes seem to have disappeared. Hello, Steve. Hello. Hello. How do you wash your beard? I use conditioner and leave it for a few minutes. Good to know. Have you got any cigarettes? Oh yes, I've got a couple. Can I have them? I'll give you them if you could please pass me that soap. I seem to have dropped it. Um, no. Um, no thanks. Oh, that's a shame. If I have to, I'll, I suppose I will, but... I don't want to. I don't want to, uh, no. 
Out into the yard. Hey, Craig. You look like you need help. Hello, sir. Hey, hey, pal. Are you okay? No, man. I, I'm not. I, I need my stuff. What stuff? My, my book. I, I haven't read it in so long. Do me a solid and get it for me, would you? Sure, why not? Thanks, man. You're, you're the best. If you go to the library, you'll find it. It's the biggest yellow book in the place. Biggest yellow book in the library. Got it. Thanks, man. You're saving my life. What's in this book? Seven ways to comb your hair. Biggest yellow book. I think Stanley's has sat on it, is he? No, it's a stool. Maybe, maybe Stanley knows. He knows all the books. Oh, it's that one. Ah, it looks like the book that guy from the yard wanted me to get for him. I'll take it. Enjoy the book. Enjoy the book. It's me again. Well, this is my buddy. Did you get my book yet? Yes, I've got it right here. Thank God, God. I need it so bad. Why do you need this book so much anyway? It's not the book I need, it's the stuff I hid in the spine. Wait, what? You just used me to smuggle your drugs? Come on, man, no, don't be so about it. Please, just give me my stuff. Fine, here you go. Thanks, man. You rock. Here, have a cigarette. Thanks. Two cigarettes down, four to go. Hi. What's up? I saw you talking to Craig. You should be careful around that guy. He's a mess. Thanks for the tip. What do you want me to do for you to give me a cigarette? Well, I would be practicing my slam dunk, but that power trip guard confiscated all the balls. Why did he do that? Well, some nerd kid from the library was using a ball to reenact the scene from Shakespeare. You know, the guy with the skull. Hamlet? Yeah, something like that. So anyway, the nerdy guy, I think it was Macbeth, but hey it's fine. The nerd guy, he's holding the ball out, shouting, alas, boy Yorick, and all that sort of stuff, when suddenly this guard comes... He comes along and says, this is a yard, not a theatre, and whacks the ball with his baton. Well, the ball, it's made of rubber, see, and it bounces, it bounces right off this wall here and hits the guard smack in the face. So the guard, he gets all mad and starts whacking all the balls. Short story is, we got all our balls confiscated. <laughs> what a shame. You're damn right, I haven't done anything competitive in weeks, it's driving me mad. Tell you what. How about a game of rock, paper, scissors? You'll be doing me a favor. Well, sure, why not? Awesome, all right. The first person to score three points wins. Ready? Two, three, one, two, go. Millions. Scissors. Damn, scissors beat paper. Your point. Next round. Two, one, go. Um, so if you did paper last time, you quite likely ought to do scissors. Yeah, paper beats rock, that's one point to me. Next round. Two, three, one, go. Paper beats rock, that's a point to you. Next round, two, three, one, go. Uh, you haven't done scissors yet, have you? Damn, rocks beat scissors, that points you. Hey, that's your third point. You win. Serves me right for getting cocky. Well played, man. Here's your victory cigarette. You burned it. Thanks. Oh, that brings me to a total of three cigarettes so far. I'm halfway there! Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm literally... Oh, dear. Great security in the prison, by the way, lads. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, that's three cigarettes down. So three more. And then I think it'll be the final one, so it'll probably be the last episode in the next one. I did say it was a short story. But, okay, so I think that's it for today. I will speak to you guys in the next video. Cheers for watching, minis. Join the Goblin Army. Bye-bye.